we have on Simulacrum spawning in the lower right hand corner. The most American StarCraft player of all time. Hailing from a region of New York that most people don't even know exists, known as Upstate, in the red, representing the red, white, and blue. It is Ting's Neeb. And his opponent. Back in the day, in the dark times, he was known as the Little One. But don't you dare assume that he's little when it comes to his StarCraft skill. No. Representing Team Liquid, and now representing Canada, it is TLO. Yeah, these guys are both awesome. I've loved TLO like since since I started watching StarCraft. He's been one of my favorite foreigners. It was always like him and Snoot were the people I'd root for a lot way back in the day. EU Zerg players, 2011. Do I need an ESL account to see bracket details? That's actually a very good question. I'm not sure. I don't think so. If that, um, if that link requires that, I'll try to link to one that doesn't. No, you shouldn't. Um, just click on just click on bracket. Once you hit that link, it takes you to the info page. Just hit the little bracket tab and you should be good. I just open it in an incognito tab and it didn't require any sort of uh, sign in or anything. There you go, Fibrix got you like two minutes ago. I don't know why I bother saying anything. Chat's got you covered. <laughs> now we got a Stargate coming up for Neeb. That's about as standard as you can get. A lot of players these days move away from some of the more standard plays. Just to keep it interesting. But, uh, Neeb sticking with Stargate. And I mean, you can't go wrong with a couple of Oracles, maybe a Phoenix to open it up. It's really great scouting. Now, TLO is known for his creativity. So we may see something a little bit unorthodox coming out of our uh, German-Canadian friend here. Now, TLO did a lot, have a lot of practice against Alpha Star. Uh, so he may know things about the game that nobody else does, thanks to that. Because <laughs> Alpha Star played really strangely. Uh, and I think it forced TLO to use his creativity in new and unexpected ways. It's kind of what it sounded like uh, listening to him talk about it on Pylon Show and uh, elsewhere. So we'll see if we get any sort of creative stuff out of him. I'm interested in what Oh, I, like I love this out of TLO. That drone pops, he just turns it into an Evo chamber, wastes a bunch of energy of this Oracle. And now this Oracle has 45 energy. I think it costs 30 to turn on. Spore crawler here, but the queen gets picked up. Grabs a drone, gets on out of there. Gonna wanna cancel that lift up. Back at home, he did grab a second Oracle, is getting a third one as well. And a Robo. Meanwhile, TLO going for that Roach Warren and a Lair. TLO is the first player you ever rooted for. I absolutely believe that. I mean, he, uh, he, was, he was there and playing good StarCraft back at the beginning. Not a whole lot of aggression. 
of aggression coming out from either player. This map is actually really good to Nidus, and there is a little blank spot in Neeb's base right now. If, and I'm not saying that's what TLL is planning on, but if he was planning on it, this map is a good one for it. Triple Oracle coming in for some harass, though. Oh, two queens at that base. A lot of queens here for TLO, and really nice queen movement. Is going to lose some drones, but you kind of can't not lose drones with three oracles coming in. Six drones, really not that bad for this investment uh, out of Neeb. Oh, I thought he lost one, but they're just stacked. Still has all three oracles alive, though, and that's really important. Especially if we do see any sort of cheeky play. No knight is coming out. It's just going to be uh, Glau reconstitution and plus one missile attacks. And the infestation pit coming out of TLO here. Neeb going into that temple archives, getting his own plus one, getting some immortals out. Immortals going to be real important units against the <laughs> roaches. And TLO does have a good amount of roaches. We have a bit of a move out here from Neeb. Oh man, setting up a whole bunch of stasis traps and then immediately two of them get taken out by the Lynx. And then a Roach. A ton more Ravagers being made right now by TLO. Which I guess this move out from Neeb was kind of just to try to force units and that's what he did. I mean, I don't know what TLO's game plan was, but if it wasn't Ravagers, now he might feel a little stuck with these eight ravagers and that's a lot of gas spent on that that could have been used for the swarm hosts which is what's coming out i don't think he's too sad to have these ravagers though i don't want to make it sound like they're bad units they're very good units oh need paying attention dodges those vials turns on the oracles they really don't have much energy but should be able to get a single kill this army, there's three immortals in this army. Storm's eh, not quite done yet, about halfway there. Gonna be a little bit before that happens. This Nexus is not long for this world. Yeah, Neeb just gonna go ahead and cancel that. His plus one is about to finish though. It's gonna make any of these fights a little more favorable. But actually, no Nidus or anything here. Tilo bringing the Swarm Host to the front line, walking the Queens out even way off a of creep here to help defend against any Oracle shenanigans this phoenix will see that as the locusts spawn storm on the locusts as they land landing on archons though not really getting any damage done but you know free units free damage and now the real attack starting to happen a little bit it's really hard for neep to push down this ramp might want to move back a little bit closer to the shield batteries. Hmm. Oh, really nice storm there. TLO does have to be careful here. I love this spreading creep this way. This is a classic TLO thing. Really nice use of spells here too. To help defend these uh, these locusts. Immortals are very good at killing locusts as well, so having this many immortals. Six immortals is nothing to sneeze at, especially against roaches and ravagers. A lot of these units going down for TLO. What does he have on the backside? Zealots is what he has on the backside, killing 17 drones. This will be cleaned up by TLO, but TLO basically just has roaches back here. He's going to try to dual prong hit with the locusts. But it looks like Neeb's gonna pull back. Oh no, these locusts are the uh, swarm hosts getting caught here. They're gonna have to drop their locusts. Oh! Locusts do get dropped, and this army's a little bit split up, so that is not ideal. Already losing a couple of units. Nice storm. Teal are just gonna tap out, though. Down to 48 workers. Not feeling like he can finish that with his 104 supply of army, but it's basically just roaches and swarm hosts just not feeling good about his position in that game definitely a, a tight one though i think he had some 
opportunity there, but Neeb with really excellent holds. How many players qualify in this bracket? That is a good question, actually. I believe it's three. I believe three players qualify in this bracket. I will... I will look that up as we start getting into this game. I don't want to... I don't want to miss anything here. I want to make sure we get into the lobby, get everything set up, and then I will take a look. Hmm. Question is, where will I take a look? Uh, we're going to be heading into Nightshade. Nice should be a good game on here between these guys this might this map might lend itself a little bit better to tilo's swarm host strategy um we shall see i'm not sure right now where to look for that information about the uh the qualifications I, I can't remember if it's three or four players per region. I feel like it was... It's definitely outlined somewhere uh, that it's either three or four players per region, except Korea has two qualifiers. So I think Europe gets three players um, in that qualifier. The Americas get three, and Korea gets six. Not 100% confident on that though, and <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to be completely wrong, and then tell you like it's absolutely what's happening. But I believe that to be the case. So let's hop into uh, game number two on Nightshade, where we have in the lower right-hand corner, representing Ting and America, it is Neeb. For a gateway expand here. And his opponent in the upper left hand corner, the creative man himself representing Team Liquid, it is TLO. Going for the hatch gas pool. This probe, this, man, this probe took a lot of damage he was down to five hit points one more hit he'd been gone oh man he's only two hits away right now yeah he's gone tlo ain't messing around he wanted to kill that probe i don't blame him cybercore coming up see if uh Neeb decides to go stargate again i wouldn't be shocked unless he has a nice little build plan bracket issue was a browser issue uh, i'm glad you got that sorted Is gonna be Stargate. So, uh, coming out of our Protoss player here. Alright, let's see if I can find out real quick while we wait for the Stargate to finish up. Keep an eye on the production tab, make sure nothing crazy is going on. I do want to double check on how many players are qualifying. I, I'm sure I knew this information yesterday. All right, yes, it is. So three slots from NA server qualifier, three from each, oh no, three from the first KR server qualifier, two from the second, and three from the EU server qualifier. So three NA, three EU, five KR. But the qualifiers are only like partially region locked, I, I kind of want to say. Um, in that there were eight seeded players in this bracket today from NA. And, oh, this adept doesn't quite make it. Sad adept. And there were eight that made it through the big bracket yesterday, and none of them were from NA. Uh, and unfortunately, it looks like two of our NA players fell here. We watched Cham fall earlier. Kelzor having some difficulties, some technical issues. 
or something of that nature. Not able to make it either. It's not looking good for NA in the NA qualifiers. Why is this playing in the NA bracket then? So I know there is a two minute delay. So you're gonna have to wait a little bit for that response. But yes, basically it's that. The brackets are only only the eight seeded players that are seeded into round two based on, uh, I believe, WCS points in the region. Uh, those players are seeded into day two, and I'm assuming that happens in all the regions. However, a lot of players from EU and KR wanted to play in the NA qualifiers because they thought it'd be easier. I imagine we'll see a lot of NA players that don't make it playing in the EU and KR qualifiers as well because you might as well just play in all of them. Um, yeah. However, a lot of the NA players do get an advantage for being NA, so it's not just like it doesn't matter at all. Uh, like, Neeb, Astrea, TLO, Cham, none of these guys played yesterday. They were automatically seeded into the round of 16 today. However, yesterday's bracket was super stacked. And so the players that made it out of there are their opponents. TY, Maru, Zest, Trap, uh, Rainer. You know, like, some of the absolute best players in the entire world. And uh, it makes it a little tough. It looks like we didn't, unfortunately, get game hard on this game. I feel like a lot of workers have gone down. Ten drones have gone down so far this game. And I think... I think we covered enough of the, uh, it's server locked, not region locked, kind of, kind of. If there's two Korean players or two players that agree they'd rather play on Korea, they will just play on Korea. That's actually already happened today. Um, Solar versus Special was played on Korea because they're both in Korea. All right, this army getting a little caught out should be able to take care of these links, but all the sentries go down. Now these roaches and queens moving across the map. A lot of roaches and queens. These queens staying at home for now. Ooh, Phoenix goes down though. That's not ideal. A couple of stalkers warped in. It is mostly roaches and ravagers here. So two immortals are going to be really nice. And we have some shield batteries going down for Neeb to help defend. The queens are really nice here. I love this creep highway he's set up for himself. Queen gets caught in that stasis. But three more queens. Those uh, queens that were sitting at home earlier making it across. And just straight units coming out of TLO right now. He's on 53 workers. This is a big ol' all in. More and more shield batteries coming up for Neeb though. He recognizes this and he's trying to get as much defense as he possibly can. Getting pushed down towards the third and TLO at this point. Now he has the high ground. He can just start attacking this wall. Archon gets warped in. It does have the shield battery to help, but eventually goes down. These immortals are doing absolute work from the back line, though. Just needs to dodge those biles. Those links came in from the back. Body blocked a little bit. Shield battery starting to go down now at the third. We have another Immortal that's just about to pop. Three more Stalkers getting warped in as well. But TLO is still continuing to rally units across the map. But he's dwindling in supply here. And these Queens not able to run home. They all go down and now Neeb's army, which is still down in army supply, but it, it's made up of four Immortals, which is, they're worth their weight in gold. This is a lot of Roaches though. And if Neeb is not careful, he might be caught out of position here. <laughs> Neeb going to take a fourth base. There's a whole bunch of roaches here that say no to that fourth base. Neeb wants to come down and fight this uh, away from any shield batteries and away from the reinforcement pylons. He really wants to take that fourth base. Tilo just now planting down his own fourth base. I don't think Neeb realizes how far ahead he already is being fully saturated on three bases. 
forces another cancel. It's already 250 minerals spent. Um, that, that could have been more units. And we have a spire coming up. Where is the spire? There it is, it's right here. No vision from Neeb on that spire. And uh, he's seen so many roaches, I don't know if he's really going to expect it. Cannon going down in the main though, and we already have one in the natural mineral line. Love to see one down here at the third as well. Oh, clearing up that creep, trying to take the other fourth base. In the meantime, this little roach hit squad. Moving in down here, just trying to be annoying, but doesn't want to get caught by these units. These roaches not going to be able to actually beat this army. But now as we have the mutas coming out, already 12 on the field, a couple more on the way. That's a big flock of mutas, one cannon even with a shield battery, which this one doesn't even have. Not going to be able to stand up to that. I don't believe we have blink or anything. But Neeb's moving across the map. Neeb wants to try to get some work done. Oh, sees the mutas. The mutas run right across the archons. That is not ideal. Loses a couple of mutas real quick there. And now Neeb, whose fourth base is getting pretty close here. This does not feel like a lot of roaches out of TLO. Army supply is still in his favor, but roaches can kind of inflate that. Oh, nice piles on the warp prism. No juggling, no more warp ins here. Archon's getting taken down by roaches on the right side, which means there's not going to be any anti air. Ah, but I still think there's just enough with these archons and the stalkers to take that out. The immortals stand strong. TLO is going to have to tap out. And Neeb takes that two to zero series.